Uh, hey guys, uh, welcome to my talk today. I'm going to just be talking about my journey into cybersecurity and kind of investigations you can deal with within the uh, Microsoft environment. So with my with introduction, who am I? So I am an alumni of Edinburgh Napier University. Um, I graduated just like nearly two years ago. Uh, I'm a security analyst at Quorum Cyber, uh, an active member of NUSEC, so thank you for NUSEC for having me here today. Uh, I have an interest in all things blue teams and forensics. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, how did I get to this point? Um, surprisingly, at first, I actually wanted to do marine biology for the longest time when I was like younger. So, I just had like an interest in like sharks. I seen Jaws. So, I just had like a real weird fascination with it. Um, but it kind of just didn't work out. But I, again, had an interest in IT as well. So, kind of developed that area as well and kind of got good with it. I ended up doing the diploma and learn different aspects from it. And that's kind of where I came across cybersecurity, because I didn't know much about it at the time. And then that's where pretty much where the fun things began, where I was like, oh, hacking, what is that? <laughs> um, so yeah, I wanted to learn more about that. <laughs> um, and pretty much just from there, uh, I learned being at uh, Edinburgh Napier, like learn different side, more things about Blue Team, or what, uh, for what kind of forensics you can have within digital uh, aspects. And I was able to join societies like Anusec, where I was able to like meet like most of the people I know here today, and join meetups as well that could help me develop my own personal interests and talks and subjects I wanted to do. And uh, competed in CTFs and attended conferences, not just this one today. So yeah, um, pretty much from there though, uh, I uh, got hired at Quorum Cyber just shortly after I uh, got um, graduated. And uh, pretty much speaking at my journey as a security analyst. So essentially what my day to day is like is uh, monitoring and triaging threats for customers and learning more by dealing with various uh, levels of priority for alerts and understanding kind of like how essentially any priority, even if an alert has got with basically an SLA, like when you need to respond this fast, it may not be as serious compared to some other things. So, you know, some users are signing in from different locations or executing commands are not meant to, like someone from payroll could be executing net commands, like that's not meant to happen and that's definitely suspicious. Um, um, other tasks I can provide with um, um, internal fixes and recommend um, recommendations on alerts that they need to be tuned, they may be too noisy, so if there's a false positive show up for this piece of file that triggers malware within the vendor environment, then you may need to like figure out, okay, yeah, why is this file malicious in the first, or a false balls in the first place and understand that from there. Um, I'm working with a great team to help fight these threats against with our clients. And pretty much just from there. I am, things may also go end up going to fire at time to time. Um, just understanding how to deal with those incidents is pretty much a key aspect of being in a security company. So without further ado, um, so starting off, uh, investigating threats within Azure Sentinel. So Azure Sentinel is kind of one of the primary SIEM environment that I use um, for log analysis and other aspects as well within Quorum. Um, what I can, you can do with it essentially is just filter through logs or set up IOCs, for example. Um, like what screenshot above there shows like different alerts that can come in. So essentially what those alerts do is they uh, come into our ticketing system and you work from out there like to understand like, okay, why is this a alert in the first place and what the overall classification is it at the end of the day. Um, and essentially pretty much going from there really. Um, like uh, Sentinel also uses like a KQL for example, so that's Custos query language. This helps uh, help hunt for events or filter through logs, because you can get like hundreds of thousands of logs and you're not gonna be sit sifting through them all day. Like KQL helps you get from 100,000 to like three. And um, the example query below there shows like a sign -in log table. So, um, so yeah, sign -in logs represents the table. So the table is like where you could, you're starting to like find data in. So. Um, <laughs> Within a uh, sign logs, you can be able to see like, well, what's the user signing activity? What, is, what does it look like? Is it um, benign? Is it malicious? Or like, what kind of VPNs are they using, for example? Um, and what with the user principal name, that could be like their email address, for example, like uh, what you're trying to filter by. And the device details, so what kind of device are they using? For me here, I was uh, using, um, just filtering only by Android devices within their logs. 
um, through project in it. So I wanted to project certain columns because when you're looking through certain tables like this one here, there may be a lot of uh, um, columns that just may be, may be useful and some may, be useful, may, may not be useful. So using project helps you uh, clear sift throughout there and find only piece of events you want to have. And moving on from there, Microsoft also has other methods of investigation or, or investigating. So like following portals such as like Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, Defender for Identity, and Defender for Cloud Ops, and many, many more. I mean, I could do a talk on them on his own, but yeah, here I am. <laughs> um, you'd be able to help the use these portals to help uh, further investigation and further prove the classification of, of overall for an alert. Uh, or an incident that you might be investigating. Um, events can be easily correlated as well um, and placed within just one neat uh, ticket, as I mentioned before. Uh, and this helps um, build a timeline of when the incident occurred. So starting off with Defender for Cloud Apps, this is one of the uh, 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 portals that helps manage more or less what kind of applications you're using within your Microsoft environment or your general organization. It allows for like a monitoring over shadow IT apps. So these may be uh, uh, applications that may not be necessarily like applicable for um, uh, use within the organization. So such as like um, Facebook or other social media and um, other applications that may be just deemed like to be like be a bit of a nuisance for advertisement. So like this helps you monitor like, okay, who else has been, uh, who's been using this? Is it a sanction app? Um, what kind of data have they been downloading or updating from a performing transactions, for example, and whatnot. Um, it also helps you stay on top of like what kind of office activities are performed within Office 365. So um, if they're performing like a mass download or a mass upload um, alert, for example, so that's when like uh, users downloading and then a uh, number of items within a specific uh, space of time or uploading a, num uh, a number of items spaces, a certain space of time as well. And this helps stay on top of like, if, for example, you have certain sensitive uh, fi uh, file policies, such as DLPs with data loss prevention. This helps uh, stay on top of when um, sensitive files that you've tied may be shared around within the organization. So say if uh, you had an external uh, user with a Gmail address that the file was shared to, right? Okay, is this user meant to be shared with? Like who are they within the organization? Like that's sharing the file to this person within the Gmail address and whatnot. And that helps like show show like where are they able to access the file and within going back to Sentinel, you can be able to see the office logs to see it was the data data F exfiltrated as well. And the cloud apps also helps uh, show a number of various uh, alerts as well. So going back to sign -in activity and what commands might be executed. So like remote code execution and maybe PowerShell, for example, or WMIC. Or it could also be system alerts. So it's generally, if you say have connectors within um, Sentinel, so those are just typically like a your um, uh, different connectors for uh, Defender or Endpoint or um, MCAS, for example, which is this here. Um, you may have these connectors set up to have uh, tables viewed um, within the logs, and well, if, if a connector breaks, for example, uh, like Dropbox, you may have a system alert set up to like notify you. So like if there's like a system error, it's much like a, uh, if I could describe it, like a uh, Windows message. So say like if someone's been broken within your uh, PC and you're not able to access the app, that is much similar to what it will pop up in MCAST. Um, so just going, showing an example. So here you have the alerts that shows here. So users could be signed in from anonymous IP address. So that's much like a VPN or other um, IPs that may be just triggered as like uh, uh, abnormal or anonymous. Multiple failed attempts. So that's like maybe 500 failed attempts to a certain application or um, uh, a certain um, device, for example, uh, within a, a certain given time. Maybe it may be related to brute force attempt, may not be. It just d depends really on like what way you set up the policy. And going, as I mentioned there, like usual file download, that's like their mass download file, as I've mentioned previously. So users download X and the things within a space of time. So say if it was an insider threat, like, I mean, they may want to download a lot of files to a certain point and it may be suspicious. We may want to have a look further of like what kind of files they were downloading and, and if it was like meant to be uh, 
approved transaction. And voila. And over here, you can see that we have like different discovered apps. So uh, going back to a um, uh, how uh, you can monitor your uh, the, the shadow IT apps. So over here, you can see like likes of like OneDrive and Mega, so like your file sharing um, applications like iCloud. So this is like, able to stay on top of it. And Microsoft has like certain classifications, like given a range of a security score of 10. So it allows for um, like so if a security score of 10, if, if it's given a security score of 10, it'll be, it'll be good for like compliance or like other um, things within your environment. Um, such as like social media applications, for example, may be given like a six because it just may be not compliant and given for data privacy, data privacy reasons and whatnot. And this just helps like really stay on top of like how many users are like currently accessing that application since like June of last year. So you'd be able to stay on top of like who, what is performing it um, and what IP address might be performing it from, for example, and whatnot. Um, Moving on from it there, we have Defender for Endpoint. So this uh, portal actually mon uh, manages quite a lot within your environment. And um, you could, I could practically do a talk on its own, like given the amount of things in it. But just to summarize, um, Defender for Endpoint is like an enterprise security solution that um, helps uh, enterprise network detect, investigate, and respond to advanced threats. So going back to PowerShell commands being executed or anything on that particular. You may be able to see what command was executed, when was the uh, command executed from, like who did it, um, and whatnot. Um, you also have like sort of a, uh, automated investigation. So it's just much like a, a defender on your personal device. Like if you had malware uh, detected on your device, um, defender would pick that up based on certain um, signatures and whatnot, fit, uh, on the, depend on the file, and quarantine it. Automation is much like that there, where like you initiate, a, a, essentially a robot does it on your behalf and um, remediates the file before you can do it. So it saves more like a minister a lot of time, kind of like individually going through each like device that might be infected. Um, these like these policies are in place to help stop that and just kind of like save a lot of time and man hours for. It. Um, and whatnot. Um, you have also like, uh, like features like uh, attack uh, training simulations. So this allows for like, simulating real world attacks from like you know from likes of FTP groups. Um, you can have like likes of credential stuffing or password spraying attacks, for example. Uh, and you, what you could do is you uh, have set these up within your organizations and train your users on it. So if you had set up like a fish campaign to a, a set amount of users within a team, for example and you could see who could click on the uh, fish email or who entered in their credentials or be able to get a gist of who reported it. And essentially what it does is that it helps with the likes of training them. So what if they, if they do get caught, they will be just told like, yeah, this was a, a fish test, you did fail, but here's recommendations to how to prevent it in the future. So we'll go through like Microsoft official training to help with um, any pre uh, preventing any real life attacks that may occur to in your organization. Um, Defender for endpoint in particular is good for def uh, um, uploading your endpoints to it. So if you onboard an endpoint, you'd be able to mo mo monitor all the activity to it. So like so seeing this device timeline, what kind of, um, again, going back to commands being executed and what kind of processes are being run. Um, who was logging in on a device at certain times? Like, is it a shared computer? Is it a personal computer? Um, and whatnot. And um, just giving a gist of like, if malware is prevented or if there's a malicious file attachment, for example, like what what kind of activity was seen within the basis of that uh, uh, time frame? Like, what happened before? Like, because particularly if you have like a a, like a ransomware um, campaign on the go, like you may want to see like well, who was logging on the device at this time. Like, what kind of um, activity was on this device like a week or 30 days ago. Like you want to get, you want to build a good timeline about and, uh, and Defender Endpoint helps with that. Uh, and just many other things as well. So uh, and here just as a good example of what it looks like. So um, be able to see over here, this gives you a summary of what a multi-stage instant looks like. So typically if and it, a alert comes in with in Sentinel, and it gives you a link for this portal here. It redirects you straight to where the alert took place. And what can it what it can do is it shows you like giving you like a device a nice uh, timeline of where what was occurring within the file, like what kind of file was seen, 
within the user device. Like what kind of processor being run? Was it Adobe or was it Word, for example? If a number of alerts were being triggered in the same place, it could create like a multi-stage inc uh, incident. And what Defender does is that it coordinates all that together and does exactly what this screenshot shows here. So it shows like 95 alerts for this one device, but two users were seen with it as well. And there's 38 mailboxes involved. So what that um, helps with is just correlating, like, see, like, what, what are the alerts somewhere in nature? Like, what kind of activity was seen? Oh, no. And automation, essentially, this is where automation kind of kicks in. So automation is doing essentially all this in the background for you and, like, correlates all this evidence for you. Um, the investigation bit over there is, like, showing, like, automation is uh, kicking in to run a scan on, like, the device itself. Like, is there malware present with this device? Like, what? Was it, did it fail? Was it succeeded? Like what kind was the overall end result of it, of that scan? And then it collects like evidence and response. So that's like typically like what kind of files and processes we're seeing and helps you kind of figure out like, well, okay, what, is there like any suspicious um, uh, processes being run at the same time or executed, for example? Um, and yeah, um, you can be able to like just like essentially just like do a lot with this portal. Like, I mean, like over here is just like you could essentially go back to like you can do a talk really on its own on this portal because there's so much to it. And just another screenshot here. This shows a uh, likes of um, advanced hunting. So advanced hunting portal, uh, like much like uh, Kate Quill within Sentinel, you can use advanced hunting to get further evidence within your. Um, uh, uh, organization itself. So say, for example, if there was um, post delivery events within an email, you may want to have a, f uh, have a look at what kind of um, uh, emails were seen with um, malicious file attachments, for example, or if they were fish related, like you want to kind of correlate that evidence together and figure out, okay, within a certain period of time, who else was seen with this device? And I want to see like what kind of action types were performed on it. And it kind of helps you build up it here. The, um, the other cool thing about this here is that like you can actually set up like custom uh, alert detections on this as well. So when log4j happened, uh, Microsoft did have like custom queries for uh, organizations. So essentially, you could you could set custom queries on this here and run it with your environment, and it helps you figure out okay, what out of like a lot of endpoints, who uh, and servers, for example, like may have um maybe an effective log4j and like what had um out of date out version. So you can focus on that from that end on. And moving on really from Defender for Identity for the last portal, and this is pretty much where you get your uh, identity solution. So it's just kind of like just le leveraging more on your um, on-prem uh, Active Directory to like identify like um, high threats within your uh, directory itself. So like for example, like uh, brute force attempts or parse the hash or um, uh, LDAP queries, for example, um, like it just shows you like everything that's be running within this portal, for example. So, um, yeah, it just really, it really does help with that there. And like this is like what uh, Microsoft's official and word on it is. So, looking at these two portals here, you can be able to see as going back to it, you can see account enumeration being reconnaissance done, and um, honey token activity. So, like if you have honey, co uh, honey accounts being performed, you can be able to see. Um, uh, well, like if you have like a honey account being um, set up with in your organization, like who, what's poking at it or what's signed into it, like you can be able to see that okay, uh, there's an administrator signing on to this, like but are they actually say who they they say they are? No, or not. And um, yeah, um, pretty much I go from there. And like what uh, other cool thing about uh, Defender of Identity is it helps show the uh, lateral movement within your organization as well. So. Um, like, like if with with we take our uh, attacker, you can be able to they want to like move in either vertically or laterally within your um, environment. And what um, Defender for Identity helps display is like what, for example, within this user's um, position within the uh, organization, where are they within your network? So lateral movement paths show like where from like this point to that point to that point where they related from, and it helps build like okay uh, like. A set of policies and set up high priority, like what, like you could sue for sensitivity. So, like, figure out, like, if, if this kind's being like um, touched or like being like 
performing suspicious things, you may be able to alert on that there and be able to act on it fast in case like there is a malicious um, attacker being touched on it. And this really helps like more with um, if an attacker is moving around with your network, you can have better like like uh, a diagram of like where really is like everything within your environment. Because when a defender fight it, it gets first set up. It has these identity sensors that get stuck on the main, the main controllers. And just like from there, you can be able to view all the traffic going back and forth. And it helps like uh, display like like timelines for um, what like uh, users were signed on with. If there was a brute force attempt, like how many field attempts were within a R or a given period of time. And really from there, you can just be able to figure out, okay, yeah, well, um, like how can I, uh, is this like gonna be like a serious threat or how can I be able to remediate this straight away? And just from there, you can be able to perform actions from each of these different portals. Like, can I just, just disable the user's account and this will sync to the on-premise or they'll be able to disable there, there too. And like all these portals do link back to each other through these sandals. So um, for example, Defender of Identity can communicate with uh, cloud apps to, if alert triggers here, an alert triggers in cloud apps and cloud apps triggers within Sentinel. And that's how we able to, are able to pick up that activity um, from a managed services point of view. And from there, it just pretty much they all communicate with each other in one up. And just finally, like how can like this uh, I, IR be able to like, how can, how can we help IR with this in, like with an instance? So like using all these portals, you'd be able to query the evidence and stick it within like your um, Jira tickets, for example. And from here, like, if an incident does occur and you do have like this neatly timelined of events like occurring, you'd be able to like just prove like what like um you'd be able to prove like a faster time of events from like the moment like a war room gets set up and an incident occurs. So when did this when did the alert activity seen? Like what like every action did you perform? Like when was the um when was the malicious attacker like performing like certain commands or uh, running malware, for example, back to like a, a CNC server. And this helps like just establish a quicker timeline, whereas like it saves them a lot more work and gets like quicker on the ball with it. So it allows them just uh, helping with um, the time management of a, of a delicate uh, matter. Um, and SOC alerts as well can show like initial um, activity as well. So going back to sign activity, this helps like see like, okay, this is like maybe an attacker attempting to sign into the user's account. If they compromise it, what's the significance of this account? Is it really sensitive or are they able to like move a bike from there? Because once this account's compromised or like whereabouts are they able to do that and you're able to stay, uh, get on a top uh, quickly. So like any, like as I say, going back to any alert, like any alert can like be serious, like regardless of like what priority might be assigned to it. And one on them, like from like from there, like it once like you pretty much like as an analyst point of view, you can identify like what like um, actions can be taken. Like this helps stop an attacker in its trace. And from there, I the IR team can help establish like okay, when was the initial uh, point of contact, and what like well, how, how, what else have they done? Are they still within that point? And just quickly monitor, uh, closely monitor that there from there. And this helps just avoid further damage to the client itself. So yeah. Um, and yeah, um, that is it. Uh, thank you so much for attending, everyone. Um, I really do appreciate it. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you so much as well for any sec. For me too. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> so uh, any questions? Right, yes. Well, what most interesting alert? Um, it was a uh, oh, that's a good that's a good one actually. Um, I, it wasn't really, it wasn't like more like an interest alert. It was like a, I find like, you know, it was an anti-malware action that failed with this device. And it was an old piece of malware that was found on it. They were like trying to figure out, okay, well like it's, we're trying to raise with a customer and like get rid of this file because Defender, this device itself wasn't onboarded properly. So like you can't run Defender for on it. It's just like, if it isn't fully onboarded, Defender might not be installed on it. You can't remediate it. So we find out, yeah, we, we you just like pass it on and just remediate it. But we find like there's other devices with this old piece of malware were starting to show up. We're trying to figure out where is this thing showing up? So I did a bit of digging myself and find like this was originated on like a file tip storage, like a really old piece of like um, uh, uh, hard drive as well. And then um, what happened was uh, it this uh, RoboCopy on this NAS file share, uh, uh, sharing server uh, had held, had brought this dormant piece of malware to life 
I started uh, beaming it to all these other endpoints that were connected to this server. And what happened was just like, it just started alerting all of those things. So I found that quite interesting. So I was like, how did like, that thing be just stuck there for a long time, right? So yeah, that's that's probably, that's probably most probably an interesting one because I did, I did I do a bit of digging to learn a lot of stuff that day. So yeah. Yeah. any other questions? Uh, like I mean, because I know I mentioned like uh, going to the last slide. Like I do like particularly like, to go with uh, the IR team itself because like the I find like e even with getting to understand their engagements because and uh, with a quorum like if you have a ticket that brought, is brought up like the high incident, you can uh, IR can bring you along with that and be able to gauge okay yeah that's how what what is what is a war room like what what is all these internal different rooms being set up because I never knew this before. Like before my first um, engagement, like I was able to like just be able to, uh, on a call with a, a client like the opposite side of them and just uh, like shadow and just gain a lot of experience, like just gain some experience that way. Um, I, so like I just stepped up to develop an, an interest for IR thought there and just because I'm I'm going back to I like I really like forensics and like the just the forensic aspect is where I know I like to be staying in. So yeah. any other questions? Um, we, yeah, we use uh, other tools as well, but um, it's more just for, we, we can use like other open source tools as well. So we can have typically like that sort of IP info to look up like IPs as well, because Sentinel helps you. Um, th this is like a general thing with Microsoft where it could have pinpoint like the geolocation of what an IP is registered, right? But sometimes it is, it is a bit of an issue in the past where they may miss you configure like an IP. So like I always like double check anyway, like some IP info to figure out like what's the IP's location. Is it a registered, uh, is it a Tor address? Is it a VPN address, for example? And this helps like just like building up that information as well. Likes of um, a URL scan as well. Like you can scan URLs as well before without actually having to actually investigate yourself with a virtual machine. And it's like that, that like website is so good for showing you all the redirects if you're not, if you're like really like starting off and you're unsure of like what is contained within it, um, and it shows even shows you like example screenshots, for example, of like what the the file leads to, or it can even give you a recommendation of what Google Safe Browsing gives it to. So like, is it malicious or is it clean, for example? So, yeah. So. Oh, hi. Uh huh. Um, it just, it really, um, Defender for Identity is more, it really just depends like what way the, uh, the organization itself sets up on-prem, but not a exact, not exactly. It's, it's just it, essentially like Defender for Identity communicates with the on-prem itself. So anything happening on there, like you can see essentially with all that traffic there, it's something more that you can't. I'm not entirely sure, like on enforcing MFA there. Like, I know you can disable the account and be able to just like disable the sessions as well remotely with her. Enforcing MFA, I'm not actually too sure about um, on that. So, yeah. That that answer your question. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions or that? Thank you.